So I'm here to introduce food truck voting. But before I do, I just want to make sure no one's confused. I'm here to talk about ballots, not burritos. <laughs> but that said, there's no reason voting can't be just as easy and convenient as grabbing lunch. To begin, think about the last time you voted. Hopefully it was sometime during the past year. And if you're like most Americans, you went to a local school, church, some other shared space that serves as your polling location. When you got there, you waited in line for a little bit before being greeted by some friendly poll workers. Then you got your ballot, voted, dropped your ballot in the ballot box, and got your I voted sticker. Now, I know that sounds a little ideal and that it's not always that smooth, but I'm here to say it can be. Now, I want you to go along with me for a second and think about the last time you didn't vote. You knew there was an election, but you just didn't make it to the poll. Were you too busy? Too many things going on? Maybe it was that project due at work, or between school, piano, and soccer, there was just never enough time in the kids' schedule to make it to your poll? Well, according to multiple studies by the U.S. Census Bureau, of reasons for not voting, the number one reason in each study is that people are too busy or have conflicting schedules when it comes to getting to the polls. In fact, for those who do vote, the busiest hours are almost always after five o'clock when people get off work right before the polls close. People have to adjust their lives and schedules for voting. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but the time and convenience, the barrier that poses, is often enough to deter someone from voting at all. And that's why I'm here today, to introduce you to food truck voting as a way to address this challenge. It's something we rolled out in the elections office here in Ada County, Idaho, as part of our early voting efforts during the recent presidential election. With great success, I might add. By making voting mobile, we were able to go to the voters. So for three weeks leading up to election day, we were able to stop in front of some, it stop in some small towns, in some of the front of large employers, on the college campus, and even right in the center of downtown Boise. By going mobile, we were able to make voting more available to more people in more places than we've ever been able to do in the past. Instead of just focusing on where voters live, we were actually able to go to where voters are, at work. The key to food truck voting is the simplicity of the design. We're not the first ones to come up with a mobile polling place, but what we've done is simplified the design in a way that makes it affordable to implement and easy to move around. Here we are in downtown Boise. This is actual footage of us setting up for early voting on November 4th, the Friday before the presidential election. As you can see, we've taken a concessions trailer and overhauled it for voting. Add two pop-up tents, some sidewalls, and we're open for business. Our four-person food truck voting crew can set up or tear down in 20 minutes. In fact, that's where the inspiration for this idea came about. In 2013, during an election, we had a school that was serving as a polling place go on lockdown. That meant for one hour, no one was allowed in or out on election day. It was in that moment that we realized we needed to be able to respond in an emergency, hence a mobile polling place. But once we had the idea of going mobile, we began to see all of the awesome opportunities and potential it presented. So from there, our emergency backup plan evolved into food truck voting, and our early voting efforts began to expand. Now, looking a little closer at the design, voting is easy. Just like a food truck, the voter walks up to the window and requests his or her ballot. We take advantage of technology and use a ballot-on-demand printing system. This allows us to securely print each voter's ballot and ensure they have the right contents. 
So it doesn't matter where in the county we are or where in the county the voter is from, we can print them their specific ballot. All the voter has to do is walk up to the window, show his or her photo ID, sign the poll book, and we print them their ballot. Once the voter has their ballot, voting's simple. They turn around, and underneath the tents are the voting booths. The voter can go, mark their ballot, and at the exit is the ballot box, where the voter can deposit their ballot and get their I Voted sticker. What makes food truck voting so great is that it addresses many of the toughest challenges elections administrators face, including finding a place to vote, ballot security, accessibility for voters with disabilities, and like all things cost. Now, first off, it's self-contained. Finding a place to vote is difficult. It doesn't matter where you are or whether it's for election day or for early voting, finding a place large enough and available for a couple of weeks is a challenge. Just think about where you vote. It probably serves some other purpose, whether that's as a school, church, library, fire station. But by being self-contained, we have everything we need right there in the truck. That means we can pull up to an empty parking lot or pull up to a street corner, and in 20 minutes, we're set up and ready for voting. In the past, a small community or suburb might be easily overlooked for early voting because it's just too much expense and effort to set up just for that community. But now, by going mobile, we can let voters know we're coming, pull into town for a couple of days, set up and vote people right there with little effort or additional expense. Now, with all things in elections, ballot security is always a major consideration. And the simplicity of this design addresses that too. Much like a food truck, we keep the important and technical parts inside the trailer. By having the ballots, the printers, computers, and other materials safe and secure with the poll workers in the trailer, we can keep things safe while we have the voters and everyone else outside the trailer, underneath the tents, on the sidewalk. In fact, physical security isn't our only consideration. In our first election, we worked with a cybersecurity firm to ensure that our voting system, which we keep offline, remains secure too. Additionally, the easy setup and teardown allows us to pack up each night and take the trailer back to our elections warehouse, where we can ensure even greater security when we're not around. Next is accessibility. All polling places must meet the standards of the Americans Disabil with Disabilities Act, regardless of whether where we're voting in does or not. And the simplicity of this design addresses that too. Instead of having a ramp or a wheelchair lift, by keeping voting out on the sidewalk, underneath the tents, anyone can walk, roll, or even skip right up to the booth and request his or her ballot. Now, I mentioned earlier, we're not the first ones to come up with a mobile polling place. But we've simplified the design in a way that makes it cost-effective, too. When you include the trailer, the graphics, the tents, the computers, printers, and everything that went into this, the county only spent about $50,000 on this setup. In comparison, that's a tenth to a quarter of the cost of similar efforts that have been deployed elsewhere. But when you consider the life of the trailer and the impact it can have on providing access to voting, it's a small investment. Where food truck voting really matters, though, is in the difference it can make. When we compare the 2012 presidential election to the 2016 presidential election, we saw a 28% increase in early voting participation just due to the food truck voting trailer. That's only a portion of the overall increase we saw in our early voting efforts overall. Historically, and really even currently, Voting is almost always based upon where you live. 
And that's just due to the practical challenge of getting the right ballots and materials to each voter. But now, by taking advantage of new tools, expanding early voting, and making voting mobile, we can go to where you are and serve the voter. It doesn't matter whether you're in an urban or rural environment, food truck voting can help. During the presidential election, we set up for a week right in the center of downtown among all the tall office buildings. But that was just days after we'd set up on the side of the road in a small rural town and caught voters as they were driving by. The key is, by going mobile, we can serve more people and serve more places than we've ever been able to do before. Currently, 34 states conduct early voting. And it's my hope that after sharing this idea, you may see food truck voting at a street corner near you. It doesn't matter where we live, work, or play. We all have a voice that needs to be heard through our vote. We shouldn't let our busy lives or inconvenience stand in our way. Food truck voting doesn't address all our voting challenges, but it can certainly help fill in the gaps. Just imagine, the next time you vote, you take a break at work, walk outside, and see this giant vote here sign. Why not stop in and cast your vote when you've got the time? You can do it just as you're on your way to grab lunch. It's that easy.